Hello and welcome to this tutorial on how to take a Red Hat exam. Let's get started. Once your exam begins, so does the timer. You can see how much time you have left by looking in your exam's browser. Remember, it's your responsibility to be aware of the time you've used as well as how much you have remaining. It's also important to note that each exam's time limit's different, so please plan accordingly. You can choose the exam documents language here. This will only change the language that's viewable in the exam browser. Everything else, like applications you use, terminals, as well as the operating system, will remain in English. If you remember back to when you set up your machine for the exam, it was possible for you to change your keyboard's layout and language there. It's important to remember that all of your exam's machines will always be in English by default. While you can certainly make changes to each of these machines' keyboard layouts, it's not guaranteed that these will match the layout that you selected during setup. We recommend that you keep your keyboard layout set to English, so that changing these layouts is not just another task for you to have to do during your exam. Next to each task is a revisit or done button. These are there for your reference. The exam system does not take them into account. If we click one of these tasks or hyperlinks, after you perform the action, you can click the back button to move on to your next task. If you happen to have any comments or ideas about this item, click the feedback button to leave us your thoughts. Any feedback that you leave us is not part of your grade. To bring up a terminal, simply click the activities button and then click on the terminal icon. You can open up multiple terminals as you need. To open the VM manager, click the activities button, then click the VM manager icon here. Okay, let's connect to node two. We'll click the node 2 icon here, and then we'll click status. It appears that this node is active. Let's use the SSH command to connect to that node. The IP address is located in the configuration information instructions. To log into node 2, we'll use the SSH command, ssh space root at 172.24.14.11. Okay, next the command asks us to enter a password. You can see here that the password is test1. The command prompt has now changed to root at node 2. Next, let's open up node 2 via the console. In the VM control, click console node 2 VM. Once the console loads fully, hit the enter button to bring up a command prompt. To log in as root, type in root and then hit enter. Enter the password, which again is test1, and hit enter. And you can see here, we're logged in as root at node 2. To best demonstrate this, I'm gonna run a few commands. I'll enter the date command, and then I'll enter the history command. And as you can see, the history command shows that we've run three commands total on this machine. Then, from exam VM control, we'll select shutdown VM. Click yes, I am sure I wanna shut down the system. Now this can take a moment, but eventually you'll receive a notification that the command is completed, and you can see here that the terminal is reporting that the connection is closed. Okay, now let's rebuild node 2. It's important to note that rebuilding a node will erase and then reset that machine. So to rebuild that node, we'll click the Rebuild Node 2 button. We'll be asked if we really want to revert the system, we'll click Yes. Next, we have to type in CONFIRM in all caps in order for us to initiate the rebuild. Next, click OK. We're alerted that the VM control window might be unresponsive while our node is being rebuilt. I'll click OK again. Okay, so now to prove that this node is being reset, we're gonna attempt to log in via SSH into node two. I'll type that command in and hit enter. You can see here that the node is not ready, so we'll be patient and we'll wait a few more minutes. Okay, we're back and it looks like the VM control is ready to go, it's no longer grayed out. So we'll run the SSH command. We'll enter the password, which is test one. And success, we're logged in as root. Now, if I run the history command, you can see that the previous machine history has been erased. And in fact, that this is a brand new machine that's ready to be used in the exam. To increase your terminal's font size, hold down Control and Shift while pressing the plus button. To increase the text size in the exam browser, select the hamburger icon here, and then click the plus button to increase the zoom percentage. 
use of shortcuts like Control C, Control X, or Control V are not recommended. Sometimes using them can cause terminals or the exam browser, consoles, or the virtual keyboards to freeze up. This then forces you to use precious time resetting your virtual machines and maybe even redoing some of your work. So we recommend that you use your mouse to do copy paste. So to copy paste text into the terminal, simply highlight text with your mouse, right click and choose copy. And then we'll move back to the terminal. We'll right click here and select paste. If you need to paste text into a console, select text like we did earlier, click the open text dialog button, and then right click and paste that text into the dialog box, and then click send. On the main page of the course, navigate to the available documentation section and click on the attached URL. Find the documentation that you need, right click and save that PDF to your hard drive. We recommend using the PDF browser that's built into your operating system in order to help optimize your system's memory during the exam. Also, to help maintain your system during the exam, we recommend not opening up additional items in browser tabs, as this can lead to back buttons not working and your system becoming unresponsive. To take a break, open up the chat icon in the bottom right and click the break icon. This will alert the proctor that you need to take a break. Your break begins when you see the large coffee cup icon on your screen. Remember that while on break, your exam timer is still running. It's important not to use items like cell phones, tablets, or anything that could be used to cheat. Remember, your exam session is being recorded, and your proctor could consider accessing certain items as cheating, whether conscious on your part or not. This could result in forfeiture of your exam. When you're ready to resume taking your exam, send a chat message to your proctor alerting them that you're ready. Your proctor might have you perform another room scan before your exam restarts. When starting up your computer to take your remote exam, you are tasked with performing multiple tests in order to validate that your machine and network connection met our requirements. However, sometimes connection issues can happen. Your connection could be slow due to the fact that some internet service providers have large numbers of users at certain times of the day. Or perhaps your connection to the candidate side of our servers might not be stable. In these cases, it's possible that your proctor will inform you about these problems they could ask you to restart your machine or your internet router or perform other tasks to mediate this issue. If while taking your exam and you find yourself having connection issues and don't know what to do, contact your proctor right away so they can assist you. We hope this video has been helpful. Thank you so much for watching. Good luck on your exam.